Um, Kelly, uh, Kelly, we appreciate you coming in from TED, uh, all the way from Pennsylvania, or are you in New York today? Pennsylvania. You're in Pennsylvania? And, uh, I'm from office, and then New York, and the TED office. All right. Um, it's a little bit choppy, but that's not your fault. That's just Skype. Um, so if we, so we're getting a little bit of a weird choppy visual and uh, choppy phone. So can you just talk again one more time? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm here in Pennsylvania. This is my home office, and I work here one or two days a week, and then I'm in the TED office um, the other half of the week. Perfect. Well, uh, Kelly, why don't you just why don't you just take over uh, in the sense that why don't you introduce yourself and and Ted and 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 what's catching your attention about the students, and then we'll let questions and conversation just take place. So, uh, really, it's yours. That sounds great. So. Um, I am uh, Kelly, and I am the content producer for TED. So that means um, that I put together the speaker program, and then also a lot of the, you know, the kind of um, exhibits and things that happen at TED as well. And um, I also um, produce and co-host with Steve, who you'll, you guys are going to meet on Tuesday, TED Active, which is in Palm Springs, and. So the TED, the main program in Long Beach have about 1,700 attendees, and then we have a, uh, our, our conference TED Active in Palm Springs has about 500 people who go, and it's much, it's more, we watch it all on high-definition monitors, so the speakers are not there with us, and it's a, it's, it's kind of based in experience, like we've had a flash mob, and we've done, um, we had a hacker workshop, and you know, bike rides, and we do all these kinds of things together as a group um, on the break. So what I'm working on uh, mostly right now is, is putting together the program for um, for next February TED, TED 2011, and um, the theme for that is going to be the rediscovery of wonder. So we're looking for, you know, for speakers that can help us, you know, remind us of as grown-ups, what the, that passion was like that we had as kids, and then also, you know, kind of to answer the, or finish the sentence, like, I wonder, I wonder what if, um, and that kind of thing. So we're looking at, you know, a really broad program of some physicists and, and um, astronauts and, you know, people looking at things in the tiny world also, like nanotechnologists and, um, microbiologists and entertainers, of course, and um, all sorts of things like that. So, um, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm working on at the moment. And, um, and it's, been, it's great. I've been at TED for about six years now, and my job has changed a lot over time because when I started, you know, you couldn't really get an example of, of what someone was like as a speaker, and now with so much video and audio online, it's so easy to get access, you know, to these, this great content. And um, I, I just, I'm so excited about what you guys are doing, watching all these talks. And it it's been, I've been reading them. Um, I haven't gotten to read everything that that you all have written, but I've read a lot of them, and I, it's so. First of all, like I said before, you're incredible writers. But the insight that you're getting out of these talks, you know, is so cool. And I have to say, is Darcy, are you in there? Yeah. You are, like, such an incredible writer on physics. <laughs> I mean, every time, you know, I sometimes um, write, help write the bios or whatever when we book a speaker, and that, that, kind, that kind of writing just stresses me out, and you just did it beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> It wasn't very awesome. easy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. I mean, those are so, a lot of those talks are complex, you know, really complex concepts. Did you guys all like the talks that you, did you choose your own talks or, did, or were they chosen for you? We chose some of them. We chose some of them. We got our first three or four videos chosen. You did? Yeah, that we wanted. Have you guys, have you guys liked all of them or was there anybody who didn't like what it is that you... There were a couple that I didn't like the way that the speaker delivered their idea, but I liked their ideas. So it was kind of, I chose that one actually. I liked the title and I liked the summary of it, but then actually hearing the speaker do it, it didn't come across as well as I thought it would, so. What did you think was, um, what did you think was about that, what, what was it that you didn't like in the delivery? Um, the speaker, he, 
seemed kind of random. Like, it took me two views of it to figure out what his main point was, and then once I did, I could connect the dots, but it seemed really random at the time how he connected everything. And do you guys think that like watching all these talks is um, is helping you uh, put together what your presentation is going to be? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I have a thing that I kind of um, that I kind of well, it's, it's a way that I describe what I think makes the best TED talk. And um, I've just I've kind of really watched you know what are the talks that people people tend to love the most. And um, so then I came up with this little formula that I now I now tell speakers as we sort of prep them. And I'll tell you a little bit about what we do with speakers too. Um, but and that is that you know the minimum reason that someone gets invited to speak at TED is to come and say you know this is my incredible work or this is my big idea and you know that's like the minimum accessible talk. And then what makes the talk good, and that would be most of the talk on TED.com, is when someone comes and says, this is my really good idea, and this is why I'm so passionate about it. And they're able to sort of transfer that passion to you, and, and you, could, you, you get it. And then the, the talks that are great, and there are not, it may, I'm talking about like the top, you know, 15 or 20 on TED.com, the ones that just blow you away, or when a speaker was able to get up there and say, this is my really interesting work. Here's why I'm so passionate about it, and this is why it matters to you. And and not literally saying the things, but able to sort of communicate why their idea is so important that it directly impacts you, or why it is that you want to do what what they're doing, or or something like that. I always think that those are those are the ones that are runaway hits every time. And you know, not all the speakers when we. Um, when we, we get them, you know, we want to make sure that they are, are um, capable of communicating well, but it doesn't have to be slick. Um, you know, if they're capable of communicating with passion, then, then, you know, we believe that they can get up and give a good presentation. So sometimes it's just a matter of, of getting people to um, hone their presentation down to one main point that they can clearly communicate or tell a story. That always helps when people can sort of tell a personal story that's exciting or, um, or you know, and then also like if um, with visuals that they keep, are you guys using visuals when you do your presentations? We use slides? Yeah. 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 So in that case, we just always try to um, get people to keep them really clear, not use a lot of text, make the graph readable, but you know, just so that they, because I, in some cases, I think they can take away from a presentation, and what you want is them not to be the same as what someone's saying, but to just really add and support um, their their message or their story. Um, I don't know what what do you guys want to hear from me? What would you like me to talk about?